the production without any definite plan of capitalist society capitulates to the production upon a definite plan of the invading socialist society. That's how Engels put it in Socialism, Utopian and Scientific. He tended to be a lot more straightforward and spelled things out a lot more clearly than Marx. However, we can see some indication that Marx believed in planning as well. For example, in State and Revolution, Lenin spoke about the Paris Commune and Marx's analysis of it. And he said that the Russian revolutions of 1905 and 1917 continue the work of the Paris Commune. And then Lenin goes on to quote Marx and Marx's analysis of the Paris Commune in order to describe what he was planning for as the workers took control after the Russian Revolution. So he wrote this between the sort of bourgeois revolution, the first revolution, and the revolution that he would lead, or the coup, when the workers would take complete control. Lenin quoted from Marx's The Civil War in France about the Paris Commune, and in a section uh, uh, describing what would replace the bourgeois state, Lenin quoted Marx and used the same terms that he used about all officials without exception should be subject to recall at any time and have their salaries reduced to the level of ordinary workmen's wages. In both cases, both Marx and Lenin were speaking about the officials of the worker's state, which in fact they meant all of the workers in the worker's state who would all be officials of the state because the workers would own all the means of production, so everyone would be working for the state, and all of their wages would be set centrally because they would be all set to be at the level of the ordinary worker. Both Marx and Lenin were speaking about a society and economy in which everyone worked for the state and everyone received wages that were determined centrally by the worker's state. So they were both speaking about a centrally planned economy. Also before coming to power, Lenin made uh, an argument that planning was necessary to save Russia from the conditions that it faced at that time, having the economy been destroyed by World War I and by revolution. And Lenin argued that only control, supervision, accounting, regulation by the state introduction of a proper distribution of labor power, etc., would be able to save the economy to combat catastrophe and famine. And finally, after coming to power, Bukharin spoke about planning and its importance, and he said that communism must develop the social forces of production to a maximum, and likewise the productivity of social labor. And to this end, he said, our ideal solution to this is centralized production, methodically organized in large units, and in the final analysis, the organization of the world economy as a whole. They were very clear, especially once in power, about the importance of planning, how it would increase productivity, and how it was the only solution for Russia, for the Soviet Union, both in terms of productivity and in terms of ideology.